Good evening. Due to COVID-19 emergency, tonight's Committee of Adjustment hearing is being held by video conference and live streaming video on the town's live stream webpage at oakville.ca. This is a hearing to consider the applications for minor variance and consents held under the authority of the Planning Act. Please keep in mind that the intent of this process is to review the application that is before the committee, listen to the evidence, and then make a decision. This process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between the town, individuals, or organizations. If a request for a deferral is made and the committee grants such a request, the applicant or authorized agent must contact the secretary treasurer to schedule a new hearing date. In order to conduct an effective and efficient electronic hearing, we have adopted the following process. If you are watching the live stream in the hearing uh, of this hearing on opal.ca, and if you wish to speak to an item on the agenda, you can call 905-815-6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095. The phone number is also posted on your screen below the live stream at oakville.ca. Staff will be standing by to take your call. When you call in, staff will ask you for your name and item number that you wish to address and your telephone number. Further instructions will then be provided for you to join the video conference. When the chair of the committee polls for interested parties, the secretary treasurer will unmute you when it is your time to speak. The applicant or agent will be given the opportunity to briefly explain to the committee the basis of their application, answer any questions that may arise, and a maximum of five minutes will be provided for each presentation. You will need to state your name and address for the record, and submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. All delegations must also state their full name and address for the record. A maximum of five minutes will be provided for their presentation. All remarks and questions will be directed to the chair and any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. The applicant or agent will then be provided with a further five minutes to respond to comments made by interested parties, answer any questions from the committee members. And if the applicant or agent has concerns, um, found uh, with respect to um, conditions found in staff report, this is your opportunity to advise us. The matter will then be taken into committee for a decision, and that will mark the end of all the discussion. Any person desiring a notice of decision of an application must provide a written request, preferably through email to the secretary treasurer. Please note that you must have, a su have submitted a written request in order to be included on the list that is used by the local planning appeal tribunal for the giving of any subsequent notice of appeal. Written notice of the committee's decision will be mailed no later than 10 days for minor variances and 15 for consent applications to so the applicant, agent, and any other person who has filed a written request for such a notice. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, you may appeal this to the local planning appeal tribunal, and the last day to appeal the decision to the local planning appeal tribunal will be noted on the decision. If no appeal is received within the prescribed time frame, the decision of the committee becomes final and binding, and the secretary treasurer will then notify the applicant and anyone who has received a copy of the decision through written correspondence. People participating in the hearing are to be courteous to and respectful of the members of the committee, town staff, and other people participating in the electronic hearing. Tonight's electronic hearing is being video recorded and available for future viewing at, at oakville.ca. Thank you. We have no regrets this evening. Do I have any declarations of pecuniary interest? I see none. Thank you. Um, I'll be taking requests for deferral or withdrawal of applications at this time. The Secretary Treasurer, do we have anyone waiting? Um, yes, we have Melinda McCrory um, waiting to speak to uh, 2330 Kelsey Gate. CAVA 031 at 2021. Ms. Melinda McCoy, are you with us? Yes. Hi. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, so I'm speaking to application number A-031-2021 for 2330 Kelsa Gate. Uh, the purpose of our request for deferral is to allow for us to meet with staff 
to review modifications to the requested variances in relation to the site plan application, which is currently under review by staff. Our intent is to return to the committee once this discussion has occurred. Very well, thank you very much. Um, Ms. Secretary Treasurer, have any uh, um, members of the public um, signed in for attendance with regard to this application? I did not receive any uh, inquiries regarding this application. Okay, very well. So um, all those in support of a deferral? Okay, the application has been deferred. You'll see the Secretary Treasurer when you are ready. Thank you very much. Thank you, have a good night. Thank you. Anyone else waiting for a um, request for a deferral? Okay. I don't, yeah, I don't, I do not see anyone at this time. Okay. Um, we'll proceed with our first application of the night. It's uh, CAV 028 of 2021, uh, 2386 Springfield Crescent. Again, that's 2386 Springfield Crescent, application CAV 028 of 2021. If you'd like to speak to this application, you can call 905-815-6095. Staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conference. Madam Secretary Treasurer, do we have John Witten here, the agent? Yes, John Witten um, is moved into a panelist at this time. Very well, Mr. Witten. Mr. Witten, are you with us? How's that? Is that okay? Yes, we see you now and hear you. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Good evening, Madam Chair and uh, board members. Uh, my name is John Witten. I'm acting on behalf of the homeowners. Um, we're re requesting a rear yard setback for an, a roof over a patio from uh, requires six meters to 4.94 meters. Um, I guess I could just comment on the staff's uh, report and I concur that I think that we meet the four tests. Um, also, in the interaction with the neighbors, I can only say let the letters stand on their own merit and I'd be happy to answer any questions that the committee members may have. Do we have any questions of Mr. Witten at this time? Go ahead, Ms. Marie. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, uh, quick questions for Mr. Witten. I was just wondering, Mr. Witten, um, there was um, a letter from a neighbor, Christine Johnson, who had a few concerns um, in the event of structure damage or future removal. Um, just wondering, or uh, or any ice or water buildup, if you could just address those briefly, and uh, we can move on. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Through you. Um, there was no um, structural connection to the mutual wall separating the two uh, dwellings. So there was nothing touched there. Um, the, um, it's a polycarbon roof system which builds up with heat. So there's no snow buildup typically on that. So there won't be any ice buildup on that. So that concern uh, is taken into consideration. And I, I would, um, I, and I tried to speak to her, but try to put her at ease that that wouldn't happen with that kind of a system. But we did not touch any of her brick wall at all. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions of Mr. Witten at this time? Okay. Um, Ms. Secretary Treasurer, do we have um, anyone who would like to address the committee? I do note Ms. Christine's uh, letter of opposition and the letters of support from Ms. Chung and Vera Wood, but um, did anyone uh, request to speak to the committee on this application? Yes, Christine Johnson is waiting to speak to this application. Okay. Ms. Johnson, are you with us? I am. Thank you very much. Go ahead. 
Good evening, Madam Chair, and a good evening to all committee members. Um, thank you for your time. Um, I'd like to address, first off, Mr. Witten's comment about somebody chatting with me with regards to my concerns to the shared wall. Mr. Witten, I have not spoken with you or seen any attempt of you to come and chat with me, so I'd like to know if that was done um, at some point where I wasn't there or a letter was provided to me, but uh, I don't recall any conversation related to um, the shared wall. I do appreciate that um, the neighbors do want to have um, structure, a shaded structure, and the smaller uh, piece of uh, backyard um, does extend quite a bit beyond my property line. And not only was I concerned about the uh, attachment to my wall, if there isn't an attachment, but it is, uh, if you see any pictures within my file, you'll see that the line of the roof is uh, parallel to our property line. So that's also one of my biggest concerns as well, is that there's really no space between um, the structure and our property line that runs along our fence line as well. So it's a very large structure and takes up uh, a dominant piece of the backyards. Okay, um, are there any questions of Ms. Johnson at this time? Okay, um, Mr. Witten, this is your time to uh, reply to Ms. Johnson's concerns and address the points that she's made. Yeah, I can appreciate those. Um, I, I stand corrected. I, my conversation was through the homeowner and myself uh, addressing your concerns. So if that wasn't relayed to you, I apologize. Uh, but let me, um, it's not a solid roof, it's a translucent roof. So, and because there's zero lot lines, um, I don't think we're infringing on your lot line. We're at the edge of your lot line. So I, I've done a lot of minor variants over the years and the four criteria is always taken into consideration, which I think um, we've done that. And I think staff has supported that. And so I felt comfortable going forward with this application, Madam Chair. So I don't know what else I can add to it. Um, any questions of Mr. Witten at this time? Um, Ms. Murray? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, um, Mr. Witten has indicated that he's uh, come, be come before the town to ask for any variances in this nature before, but um, you come before us today and the structure is already built. Uh, normally, it's the other way around. Care to comment? Absolutely, Madam Chair, through you, um, and that's not typical what we do, and we end up actually installing that. She was advised by about uh, three other contractors that no, uh, even a permit was needed, and I said, no, you do need a permit. Um, she says, well, I'll hold myself responsible, and I volunteered to help her through this mess, but it could have been aver averted if she had listened to me initially. So I, all I can say, uh, They've, they've learned a lesson. I've probably learned my lesson in the sense that uh, in COVID we needed to work and maybe I should have pushed harder for her to have uh, gone through the proper channels, which we normally recommend. Thank you for your candor. Thank you. Any other questions or items of clarification? I see some of the pictures, Mr. Witten, um, that the structure is uh, very, very, very close to the wall. Is it attached to the ad adjacent wall? No, it's only attached to the back wall of the uh, the homeowner's uh, unit. Those are um, rafters which are um, not supported uh, into the side wall panel of the brick wall there. They're supported from the back and the front. So okay. there's not, no, no damage or nothing was drilled or even touched on her uh, brick wall. So I, no caulking or uh, glue to attach that aluminum, if it is aluminum, siding yeah, that's it on? Is, it is aluminum, Madam Chair, sorry. Yeah. So nothing to uh, fasten that aluminum siding to the wall? No, it's a, it's a rafter that supports itself. It doesn't need to be fastened. Very well. Thank you for that clarification. Any other items or, of clarification or questions? Okay. Um, Ms. Secretary-Treasurer, is there anyone else that would like to address the committee at this time? Um, 
I do not see any, but maybe the, if the chair could ask if there is somebody that they could raise their hands. Uh, I'm not familiar with all the names that are listed as attendee. Um, so if I see okay. a hand, I don't see anybody at this moment, but if you could just ask if, if someone's here for that application to raise their hand, then we can be sure. Sure. If there's anyone in attendance at this present time seeking to speak to application CAV 028 of 2021 at 2386 Springfield Crescent, now is the time to do so. Please do raise your hand. Like um, Miss Johnson did have her hand raised, um, so I don't know whether you want to speak to her. Uh, yes, I guess I have a, a clarification question for Mr. Witten. Um, the day that the structure was being put in place, I did question the young man who was putting the structure up, and he indicated to me that there was silicone um, attached to my wall to uh, put the structure in place. So I don't know if you could clarify that comment. I, I would have to, it, it's not there for structure reasons. I would have to check that because that might have been just on the lip of it to prevent water from sipping between the panel and the brick wall. But I have not seen that. That's not a normal practice. And I, I, obviously, I can't see that piece of the structure to be able to validate that, whether it's a true or false. But regardless, Mr. Witten, if there was silicone or not, that there would be no anticipated damage to no. that adjacent wall. No, there is what we're no. trying to get at. Yes, okay. there, would, there would no be no damage. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, if there are no further questions of either Ms. Johnson or Mr. Whitten at this time, we'll take the matter into committee. Okay, who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Ms. Murray. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Having conducted my site visit and reviewed the applicant's written submission, as well as the town's uh, written staff report, which I note the staff is in support of, Having also taken into account the comments presented um, by the applicant's agent this evening, um, thank you for the comments and the presentation, Mr. Witten. Um, uh, and, and noting that there were uh, written and oral objections from uh, neighbor Ms. Uh, Christine Johnson, I will also note uh, that on this particular variance, Madam Chair, there are uh, several letters of support, I believe, there are three letters of support uh, from uh, neighbors for this variance. Um, I may note that I was influenced by the additional information that Mr. Whitten uh, was able to impart, and I'm satisfied that the minor variance application meets all four tests under the Planning Act. I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the application for the variance subject to the following conditions. Uh, bear with me. Uh, that the roof addition be permitted in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevations drawing dated September 29th, 20, and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if the building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Thank you, Madam Chair. Very well. Thank you. Um, is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, the application has been approved. None opposed. Thank you, Mr. Whitson. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Have a good night. Thank you, committee members. Chairman. Um, while you move the next panelist into uh, place, I'll uh, read the next application. Um, we're looking at application CAV 029 of 2021 at 2480 Millstone Drive. Again, it's application CAV 029 of 2021 at 2480 Millstone Drive. Um, if you're interested in speaking to this application, you can call 905-815-6095. Staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conference. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Chair members of the committee and the town of Google staff. Uh, my name is Mustafa Hamada, the son of Amr Ibrahim, the owner of 2480 Millstone Drive. Um, we are seeking a minor, minor variance application for above ground pool to be set back 0.6 meters from the interior sideline and the rear lot line. To accommodate for the ground, above ground pool, we cut away some of the existing concrete and this allowed for more than adequate space, moving space between the pool 
and the rear and um, uh, side, side lot lines for, for maintenance and other purposes. We have spoken to our neighbor and there appears to be no objections. We are happy to take questions at this time and thank you for your time. Okay. Are there any questions of Mr. Ibrahim at this time? Okay, I see none. Um, Ms. Secretary Treasurer, do we have anyone in attendance that would like to speak to the, this application? I do not see any at this time. We do not see any hands that are raised wishing to uh, speak to this application. Very well. Um, I, I know the, the, the pool is already in and already set. Um, what prompted you to come before the Committee of Adjustment for a variance? Oh, uh, it was through a uh, town of Oklahoma staff that um, advised us to, to reach the, uh, the committee for uh, for uh, for for adjustments uh, in this meeting. Once it was set, okay. Thank you. Um, if there are no questions of Mr. Ibrahim, um, we can take the matter into committee. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Hardcastle. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, having undertaken my site visit uh, and reviewed the materials, including the uh, staff written uh, report, um, I am satisfied that the requested variance conforms to the four tests of the Act, and I'll put forward a motion of approval, um, noting that um, the, um, the uh, reduced uh, setback provides no negative impact, uh, particularly as the site abuts um, a commercial property as well as. Um, um, a right of way um, in the most immediate flankage yards. Um, the uh, motion would therefore be subject to uh, two conditions. The first being that the pool be permitted in general accordance with the submitted site plan dated February 8th, 2012, sorry, 2021, and that the approval expires in two years of the date of the decision of a permit has not been issued. Very well. Very Thank well. you, Mr. Hightower. Is there a discussion on this um, recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, your application has been approved. None opposed. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ms. Secretary Treasurer, I'll let you move the next panelist in. Um, CAV 030 of 2021 at 2430 Old Bronte Road. Again, this is CAV 030 2021 at 2430 Old Bronte Road. If you are interested in speaking to this application, you can call 905-815-6095. And staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conferencing. I have... Whenever you're ready, Ms. Secretary Treasurer. Uh, Mr. Uh, Andrew Palumbo is um, going to speak to this application. Okay, I don't see him on my panel yet. We should be there. Mr. Palumbo, are you with us? Yep, I'm here, Madam Chair. Very well. If you'd be kind enough to put your um, camera on. The uh, staff has already uploaded your presentation, and you can go ahead once your camera is on. All right, I've I've avoided the camera only because of internet speeds, but I will give it a try, and hopefully there's no issues. Um, give me one second here. Start video. Okay, very well. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair and members of the committee and town staff. Uh, my name is Andrew Palumbo, and I'm an associate with MHBC Planning. I am the agent for 2430 Old Bronte Road, and I'm just trying to make sure I can increase. There we go. Uh, next slide, please. Just making sure that I, because I'm not controlling the presentation, I'll just give cues as to, I just prepared a brief presentation um, on this proposal. Uh, the existing conditions of this site are that there's a single story detached dwelling on the property. It's located on the northwest corner of Old Bronte Road and Pine Glen Road with approximately 42.5 meters of frontage along Old Bronte and 51.2 meters of frontage along Pine Glen. And the lot area is approximately 22,300, uh, 2, 288.6 square meters exactly. Uh, next slide. 
I'll say the proposal is to construct an eight-story mixed-use building that has a total GFA of approximately 9,132 square meters, which includes 236.5 square meters of at-grade commercial uses. And from floors two through eight is the remaining residential units, of which there are 129, 86 one-bedroom units, and 43 two-bedroom units so for a total of 142 parking spaces, including 110 underground parking spaces in a two-level underground parking garage and 32 surface spaces at-grade. So that just gives a high-level summary of the proposal before the committee overall. Uh, the variances are obviously, uh, the next slide please, sorry. Uh, so just to give a, um, some quick background, it was also touched upon in the staff report that was uh, submitted to the committee members. The site has basically undergone four rounds of detailed SPA review, the initial submission and three resubmissions from, and we've basically gone to a point and we've advised our client that going through a few resubmissions and narrowing down the comments is advisable because at that point you know you go to the committee with what you believe will be the final variances that you need to implement the development as proposed so as a result there are some technical variances that are in nature in order to accommodate the proposed development being contemplated for this site and if you go on to the next slide uh, there's basically three, I'll just run through this quickly because this was already on the notice that was issued. So there's basically three variances that are needed in order to implement this uh, proposed development. Uh, the first one being uh, to permit a parking space, which is visitor space number seven, to be set back zero meters from the building, whereas 1.8 meters is required. Uh, to permit ancillary residential uses located entirely below the first story, uh, storage lockers within the underground parking garage on both levels, within the first nine meters of depth of the building measured in from the main wall. And then the last variance, which is to permit ancillary residential uses on the first story to occupy a maximum of 17.4 meters on the length of the main wall orient towards the front lot line, which is Old Bronte Road. And that same variance is also required for the frontage along um, Pine Glen Road, because um, that's the flankage lot line. So next slide. So basically, they just provided a couple of slides that give a bit of a visual context and a bit of a brief explanation as to why each of the variances, both individually and collectively, meet the four tests for a minor variance under the Planning Act. So basically, this is a fairly straightforward one. Um, parking space V7 is not covered from above, and therefore, as a result, is basically just considered a surface parking space. And if you look at the logical, that's just a logical extension of the existing parking row that exists at this ground level here. Um, so th this is why it just, it's basically a continuation of the parking plan that's already in place and which represents good circulation overall on the ground floor. And again, going through the, the submissions that we've gone through already, this has been the, agree the agreed upon layout with uh, city staff, with town staff and, and relative uh, commenting bodies. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Proposed underground storage lockers, these are what represent the ancillary uses that are not permitted within the first nine meters of depth below the first story. So basically, when you look at the floor plan, the, these locker rooms that are on the first, the P1 and P2 parking levels, they're located in, again, in a logical location in the north corner of, of the underground parking lot beside the resident stairwell. So obviously it provides a good connection for the residents within the building because it's located close enough that when they come down the stairs, the locker rooms are very close by and basically overall in that corner location it's location that doesn't impede the overall function of the underground parking levels and it also ensures to separate the retail and residential components of the mixed-use building accordingly and then just moving on to the next variance the variance number three part one so looking at the frontage along old bronte uh, this is where a 17.4% uh, requirements is increased from 15% is required to uh, account for a bicycle parking and storage room um, along again in the northeast corner of the ground floor of the building um, again similar to the previous variances this location right near the stairwell is an efficient location and it makes it actually very attractive for people or cyclists that are using that room to be closely connected to the streetscape directly adjacent and <clears throat> It only occupies a minor portion of the ground floor overall, and it won't detract from the proposed commercial retail prominence and animation along Old Bronte Road, which is envisioned by the OP and the vision for Palermo Village. Um, and moving on to the next slide, and just part two of this variance. So again, seeking the same increase for ancillary residential uses along the Pine Glen frontage up to 40.2%, but this is to accommodate a lounge lobby and vestibule, all of which will be used by the future residents of the building. Again, this is um, first one thing to comment on the layout. This is a corner site whereby the ground floor is proposing uh, parking areas and a driveway access along the front along each frontage. And that's sort of what makes the floor plate of the ground floor a little more limited. And that's why you see the uses ensure to concentrate the, the commercial frontage along Old Bronte as envisioned. And concentrating the uh, 
ancillary residential uses as a, on the secondary frontage and providing a bit of eyes on the street uh, passive surveillance along the Pine Glen frontage. So it just again it, it ensures to at least account for the separation of both. So it facilitates uh, passive surveillance on the one frontage and it gets the focused commercial retail prominence on the other. And I think that that covers pretty much everything in terms of the variances being requested. And uh, in my opinion, all, all the four variants, all the th well, three variances, one being a two part variance, collectively and individually meet the four tests of the Planning Act for a minor variance. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Very well. Thank you very much, Mr. Palumbo. Uh, are there any questions at this time? I see none. Um, Secretary Treasurer, is there anyone standing by to speak to this application? And if there's anyone in the panelists who would like to raise their hand to speak to this application, please do so now. Uh, I do not see anyone at this time. Okay, very well. If there are no questions, we can take the matter into committee. Go ahead, Mr. Klauski. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'll move that this application be approved as applied for. I find these variances to be highly technical in nature, all of which meet the four tests of the Planning Act. I would make that approval subject to the building being constructed in accordance with the final approved site plan and that the approval expire within two years if the building permit does not issue. Very well. And I also know, Madam Chair, there's no submissions from the community. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tuski. Um, is there a discussion on this uh, recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, your application has been approved. None opposed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Have a good evening, everybody. You, good evening. Um, moving on to application CAV 032 of 2021 at 239 Allen Street. Again, this is CAB 032 of 2021 at 239 Allen Street. If you're interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095 and staff will be standing by to provide you with further instructions on joining the video conference. Um, I have Neil McDonald listed as the agent. Mr. McDonald, uh, if you can turn your camera and unmute yourself, uh, we'll be ready to hear your presentation. Good evening, uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Neil McDonald, 308 Winston Road, Oakville. I'm the agent for the, this application. And the application basically is to uh, provide a covered porch at the front of the house. The existing ha home will not be uh, added to um, and uh, I concur with all the, uh, obviously, the uh, staff report and um, be very pleased to answer any questions. Thank uh, you. Mr. McDonald, are you able to turn your camera on? Are there any, while Mr. McDonald tries to um, do that, are there any questions of him at this time? I note that we have no submissions from the public, but Ms. Secretary Treasurer, is there anyone who's standing by to speak to this application? Um, there or is... anyone in the panelists who would like to raise their hand to speak to this application? I do apologize, uh, Madam Chair, I can't seem to um, okay, that's fine. It's usually on the top uh, right-hand corner. It says to start video if um, if you have the app on your um, computer, but if, if it's not working, that's fine. Ms. Secretary Treasurer, anyone raise their hands or anyone waiting? Uh, no, we do not have any, anyone waiting at this time. Very well. Who would like to move a motion? We'll take the matter into committee. Go ahead, Mr. Flemington. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Having uh, reviewed the applicant's uh, written submission, as well as the town staff report, which I do know is in support of the application, also having taken into account the applicant's uh, presentation, noting that uh, there were no 
written or oral objections from the public, I am prepared to move a motion that the application be approved as applied for, finding that it meets the four tests of the Planning Act with the following two conditions. One, that the front porch be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated February 2021. And our standard condition that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Huntington. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, your application has been approved. None opposed. Thank you very much. Good night, yes, Mr. Thank McDonald. You. Thank you. Okay. We're moving on to application CAV um, 33 of 2021 at 2600 Grand Oak Trail. Again, the application number is CAV 033 of 2021 at 2600 Grand Oak Trail. Uh, if there's anyone who'd like to speak to this application, they can call 905-815-6095 and instructions will be provided at that time to join the video conferencing. Do I have the agent ready, Mr. Fickert? Yes, good, good evening, Madam Chair. Members good evening. Of the committee planning staff. Uh, my name is Christopher Fickert. I am an architect with IBI Group in Toronto. We represent Mont Avenir, the French Catholic School Board, for an addition to the school at 2600 Grand Oak Trail. We have a very brief um, run through. If that's convenient for the committee, I can go through that. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. This is a quick aerial view of the school. And you will see it sits on the corner of Dundas and Grand Oak Trail. You will see also some construction along the north edge of the site on the site of Dundas. Next slide, please. Our proposal for this, which is in with, uh, which has site plan approval and is in process for a building permit, is to add a second story addition on top of the existing uh, single story construction which anticipated the addition in its construction with also a small addition to the west. Next slide please. Very briefly this is the ground floor as it exists in the top left hand corner the colored section represents the ground floor addition. Next slide please. The upper floor uh, is basically a group of classrooms and services built on the existing concrete roof, as was anticipated in 2014 when the school was built. Next slide, please. This just shows that the, the brown area towards the bottom left hand represents the existing condition. The colored blocks show where the classrooms are being located on the upper story, and you will also see that there is a two-story cafetorium to the top of the drawing just above where it says teachers and that our addition will match the height of that. Next slide please. This is a quick rendering of the view the pupils will have from the playground. Next slide please. This would be the view from the corner of Dundas and Grand Oak Trail. So our second story addition um, is the one that follows the same color brickwork and same idea of fenestration. We're extending the white and glazed staircase up to service the upper level. Next slide, please. So the reason that we're requesting a variance is the, if you remember the construction that I showed in the aerial, between the school being permitted and built originally, there was an expropriation of some land to create the turn lane and a bus lay by on the corner of Dundas and Grand Oak, the result of which is that the existing building is actually encroaching on the reduced setback. As we'd like to um, build on the upper story and follow the footprint of the existing closely, that would put our second story extension uh, in encroaching into the setback. So we're uh, asking for an easement to uh, uh, permission to encroach onto the side yard setback by about 900 millimeters 
and align our upper story with the lower story that already exists. I note that the, we talk to staff and staff are generally in support of this. So I'm happy to answer any further questions that anyone might have. Thank you, Mr. Schickert. Is there Are there any questions at this time? Go ahead, Ms. Murray. Uh, yes, through you, Madam Chair, to the uh, representative, Mr. Fickert. Mr. Fickert, currently the posting of the sign is on the school, and you would have to trespass to be able to read that sign. And that sign serves as notification to the broader community uh, about the plans. Um, and I'm, I'm asking if perhaps uh, did, did would, was specific instruction not given on how to post the sign or um, because the, the public really should have the ability to walk past and read that sign. Okay, I only heard a part of that. It seems as though the sign was not correctly placed following the instructions. I personally haven't seen the sign. It was a member of representative from the school board who collected the sign and installed it. Um, I had trusted that it was correctly installed. It's the first that I've heard. And I apologize if that has happened. It's certainly not um, anyone's intention to limit the public's awareness of this particular application. Um, so uh, yeah, apolo apologies for that. If we need to rectify that in some way, do please let us know. We wouldn't have a problem moving the sign to a, a better location if that's required. Thank you. That would be great. Okay, any other uh, comments or questions at this time? Okay, I see none. Um, there is, it, if there's no one waiting to speak to this application, Madam Secretary Treasurer, we can take the matter into committee. I do not see anyone at this time. Okay, very well. Who would like to move a motion? Mr. Hardcastle, go ahead. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, excuse me. Having um, undertaken my site visit and reviewed the materials, including the uh, staff written report, um, and the uh, drawings submitted in support of the application, as well as the comments made by um, the agent for the owners, I am satisfied that the requested variance conforms to the four tests of the Act. And I'll put forward a motion of approval, um, noting that um, this is a uh, uh, that the proposed addition is generally in line with the existing uh, single story component and was uh, a result of um, widening works beyond that, with, which was anticipated at the time of construction of the original building. So um, the motion should be uh, subject to two conditions. The first being that the addition be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevations dated um, December 7th, 2018 as well that the approval expire within two years of the date of the decision of a building permit has not been issued. Uh, I would note that there were no members of the public present with respect to this matter. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, your application. Uh, all those opposed? Okay, um, the application has been approved. Thank you very much. Um, application CAV 034 of 2021 at 2260 Bennington Gate. Again, um, CAV 034 of 2021 at 2260 Bennington Gate. We have uh, Mr. David Carothers. Madam Chairman, um, members of the committee, David Carothers from Carothers and Associates. Um, I am the, the applicant on behalf of the homeowners here to present these three variances to you uh, this evening for the lot coverage, the residential floor area, and for the minimum front yard setback for the porch. Uh, we've read through, we've done our diligence, first of all, gone through the neighborhood and, and obtained six letters of uh, 
support from all the neighbors in all the directions and have read staff comments and see that they are in support of the application. Uh, I know that the, the residential floor area uh, from, you know, is approximately about 300 square feet. 200 of that, 200 of that 300 square feet is actually the building, uh, the second story, and the, the 100 is the, the covered porch that are in that calculation. <clears throat> so I have nothing further to add at this time. And, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer anything. Um, are, okay. Are there any questions of Mr. Carruthers at this time? I see none. Uh, is there, we do note that the, you have uh, eight letters of support. And um, if there's anyone in attendance who would like to raise their hand to speak to the matter, or if anyone has called Ms. Secretary Treasurer, can you let me know? Uh, there's no one at this time. Okay, very well. Um, If there are no questions, we can take the matter into committee. Go ahead, Mr. Flemington. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, having uh, reviewed the applicant's written submission, as well as uh, noted, noting that the town's written staff report is in support of the application, also having taken into account uh, the applicant's presentation this evening, noting that there were eight letters in support of the application and there were no oral or written letters in opposition of the application. I would like to move a motion in support of the application, finding that it does meet the four tests of the Planning Act with the following two conditions. One, that the additions be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings, number four, dated February 22, 2021. And two, our standard condition that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if the building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Flemington. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, um, application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you. Application CAV 035 of 2021 at 2027 Shoreview Circle. Again, this is application CAB 035 of 2021 at 2027 Shoreview Circle. If you're interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095. And staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions at that time. Good evening, Mr. Barrett. Good evening, committee members, Madam Chair. Uh, I am Graham Barrett, uh, agent for the owners of 2027 Shoreview Circle. I do have a presentation if you'd like me to proceed or I can answer any questions you may have, but uh, this is pretty straightforward. Um, two very minor variances to permit construction of an addition, um, slightly greater garage projection than allowed and reduced front yard setback which is caused mainly by the curvature of the cul-de-sac and the lot line. And uh, planning staff were consulted well in advance of submitting this application and they had no concerns, uh, which is evidenced by the staff report, which I've read. Um, the owner has been very considerate of his neighbors. We've submitted six letters of support. And uh, I personally delivered letters explaining this to uh, 10 nearby homes, including three on Lakeshore that back onto the subject property and um, six out of 10 isn't bad. Uh, this will be a tasteful and suitable addition requiring no other variances for height, floor area, lot coverage, et cetera. And I uh, will be very much in keeping with the prevailing character of the area. Uh, this passes the four tests set up by the Planning Act. Um, happy to answer any questions you may have. 
Okay, are there any questions of Mr. Barrett at this time? We do note that you do have the six letters of support. Um, any questions or items of clarification of Mr. Barrett at this time? Okay, I see none. Ms. Secretary Treasurer, has anyone called with respect to this application? Or is there anyone in attendance who would like to speak to this application? Then you can please raise your hand. Uh, not at this time. I do not see anyone. Okay, very well. So um, if there's no further uh, clarification needed, we can take the matter into committee. Go ahead, Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'll move that this application be approved as applied for. I find it to be a very sensitive addition in the neighborhood and that evidenced by the six letters of support and no objection from the neighbors. I find this application meets the four tests of the Planning Act. I would make that approval subject to the additions being constructed in general accordance with the site plan and elevations dated uh, February 19, 2021, and that the approval expires within two years if the building permit is not issued. Okay, thank you, Mr. Talowski. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. You too. Good night. Okay, application CAB 036 of 2021 at 2058 Seafair Drive. Again, it's application CAB 036 of 2021 at 2058 2058 Seafair Drive. Um, if you'd like to speak to this application, please call 905-815-6095 and staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions. Good evening, Madam Go Chair. Ahead. Good evening, Mr. Kieran. Go ahead. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Um, I'm Joris Kieran of Kieran Design. Uh, Oakville, uh, 11 Bronte Road, Unit 31. I am the agent for the uh, applicant. And um, I'll just very briefly run through this uh, application. There's two variances. Um, one is for a little bit of extra garage area, which is indicated on this first slide. It's just occurring at the rear of the garage, so it doesn't widen the garage in any way from the street uh, view. Uh, and then uh, slide two, please. So uh, the second variance is for some additional floor area, which uh, is really occurring on the second floor in the two areas uh, shown here. Um, I'd also like to add that, uh, as members are probably aware, this was previously approved uh, about two years ago, and, and uh, the, uh, the owner wasn't prepared to proceed at that point. So. Um, Unfortunately, the approval expired. So this is really just the, the exact same uh, application coming to you again. It was approved uh, back then, and uh, we're hoping it'll get approved this time around. And uh, staff is uh, in support of the application uh, also. And I'm happy to answer any questions if there are. Very well, Mr. Kieran, thank you. Are there any questions or items of clarification at this time? Okay, I see none. Ms. Secretary Treasurer, is there anyone who is waiting to speak to this application or anyone who is in attendance that would like to raise their hand to speak to this application? I do not see anyone at this time. Okay. All right. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Hardcastle. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Having, having undertaken my site visit and having reviewed the, the submissions including the um, uh, staff report and the um, uh, submitted drawings and having heard the uh, presentation from the um, agent for the owner i'm satisfied that the requested variance is conformed to the four tests of the act i would note that this is a um, another example of a sensitively designed uh, dwelling that uh, that works to mitigate the variances that are being proposed um, 
And uh, so I'll put forward the motion of approval subject to um, two standard conditions. Those being that the proposed dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated February 23rd, 2021, including a driveway design that protects uh, the affected tree to the satisfaction of the director of planning. And that the approval expires within two years of the date of the decision of a permit has not been issued. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, your application has been approved. None opposed. Thanks, Mr. Kieran. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Okay, we're on application CAV 037 of 2021 at 306 Lakeshore Road West. Again, the application is CAV 037 of 2021 at 306 Lakeshore Road West. If you're interested in speaking to this application, Please call 905-815-6095 and further instructions will be provided at that time to join the video conferencing. Okay, um, I guess Mr. Tanner is here in, instead of Bruce. We are both here side by side, actually. Okay, very well. Absolutely, how are you today? Good, thank you. Go ahead, sir. Awesome. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Um, this uh, application uh, in front of you today is a very eccentric, historic um, uh, structure that's, that was uh, a two-stage project back uh, in the 50s and 60s. I going to participate in a meeting that's going on right now. Um, is, oh, who is speaking right now? Um, yes, it's Krista Lever, L-E-A-V-E-R, and it's in regards to 306 Lakeshore Road West, which is... Okay, very well. Once the uh, applicant has made their presentation, we will call on you to address the committee. If you can just keep yourself uh, muted and your camera on until that time, that would be great. Sure, road. yes. Hello? Did you awesome. hear what I said? 691-4740. Okay. I, I, I think we've got some interference. Ms. Lever, do you hear me? Okay, she's unmuted herself. Go ahead, Mr. Tanner, I apologize for the interruption. Not a problem at all. Um, it's a very eccentric property in front of you. This was a, uh, a two-stage um, home construction back in the 50s and 60s. So we did meet um, the previous owners, uh, family members that did uh, sell off the property to what is our uh, client and the new owner property developer here. Um, the the owners here at 306 are looking to, to develop it and to move into it as their primary residence. Um, we really are pushing to keep um, a lot of the details details uh, and preserve the historic nature of the build. So it's a very classic mid-century modern inspired home. We are reusing all of the existing brick on the home and we're the reason for most of our variances is we are trying to keep as many uh, of the trees on the property as possible. There's only uh, a couple noted tree removals um, based on our proposal. Uh, we, we did obviously have the option of a complete teardown rebuild, but the owner as well as us as the design firm, were very keen on keeping the, the heritage aspect and values intact um, and as undisturbed as possible. Um, so what you're seeing in front of you is mainly a bungalow design with a very small loft space above what is the proposed new garage zone of the home. So it is a single family residence. Um, the families lived in Oakville and, and are business owners in the town of Oakville for the last 25 years. Um, we do feel that it is in keeping with the neighborhood um, as much as there is a fairly subst substantial list of variances. We don't feel uh, that the variances are negatively impacting the streetscape or the neighbors. Uh, the builder as well as the owner did canvas the neighborhood, um, had some fairly positive feedback on the design. There was one concern neighbor that did approach us did write into the town with uh, with a, a initial concerns of the proposal but we uh, our our client the owner of 306 was able to connect with them yesterday evening had a really good discussion in terms of additional vegetation that we're going to be introducing on what is the east 
side wall of the pool at the rear property. Um, so it does sound like uh, we were able to get some great resolution with that direct neighbor. Um, and uh, I'm definitely open to, uh, to hearing any uh, questions that the committee has or any neighboring um, property owners might have regarding the development. I am, am here and, uh, and active. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tanner. At this time, uh, are there any questions or items of clarification of Mr. Tanner? Go ahead, Ms. Murray. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, to the city, it appears in the drawings um, there's a circular driveway. I'm gonna assume that that's permitted in this zone. Yeah, through you, Madam Chair, it doesn't appear as if there's being any modifications made to the circular driveway. Um, at time of building permit review, obviously that would be looked at further in relation to where the garage is sited in case there's a potential driveway with variance that may have been missed, but I wasn't advised that there was anything missing with the submission of this file. Thank you. Okay. Correct, Brandon. Yeah, we are looking to keep the driveway intact and undisturbed and we're not looking to widen either of the access points. Okay. Um, while we're waiting for other people to call in, I have uh, someone who has requested to attend, Mr. Mark Van Den Noort. Is he still interested in speaking to the committee? I have, um, uh, I have Mark, Hello. Ms. Chris Krista, and Suzanne. Um, I think Krista, she is here um, as a panelist as well, and I believe she tried um, having a call in there, there, but I advise that you are, you are going to be able to speak. We have you on as a, as a panelist. So when the chair will call your name, you'll be able to join the meeting and um, have your say. Okay, so I have three people who are waiting to speak to the committee. Suzanne Pennington, Mark Van Den Noort, and Krista Lever, correct? Correct. Okay, so we'll take them in that order. Go ahead, Ms. Pennington, are you available and ready? If all three would please put their yes. cameras on and... Um, can, can you see me? I'm not sure how to get the camera to turn on. I thought uh, I was So on. turn the camera on. I believe it's in the top right-hand corner of the app. It, there's a camera. Got it. Okay. Very Great. Well. Thank Great. you very much. So I see Mr. Vander, Vanden Moore. Sorry, I'm, I apologize. And Ms. Pennington. And I'm still waiting on Ms. Lever. So when you're ready, you can put your camera on. Go ahead, Ms. Pennington. Great, thank you very much, Madam Chair and, and uh, committee members. Um, I, I just a point of clarification, if I might. Um, I'm assuming the committee is considering this request based on 45-2, um, legally non-conforming, is that correct? Uh, based on the uh, uh, existing uh, dwelling depth already exceeds requirements? Um. Let me just look that up. Um, Mr. Hassan, do you have a comment on that question? Yeah, through you, Madam Chair. This is an application that was filed under 45.1 in the Planning Act, noting that new development shall conform with the applicable zoning bylaw regulations. So noting that there's uh, two additions being proposed, those additions, well, I guess three additions, there's a second story addition as well. Those additions would need to comply with the current regulations in the RL1-0 zone. Okay. So, so the, um, the fact that it's um, uh, non-compliant today, uh, it, it's, a, um, it's not based on any grandfathering or anything, then um, legally non-compliant is, is not an issue. I, don't, I, guess I, didn't, I guess I assume that that would be, since it is legally non-conforming, that that would be the basis. Well, not through you, Madam Chair. It's because it's new development, and anything that is new, as I noted, has to comply with the, the regulation. So the building at the end of the day, in its totality, would be over what is permitted under the zoning bylaw regulations, as if it was all built new. I see. So there's Great. nothing that's going to be illegal non-conforming is, is a response to your question. Nothing will Great. fall under that banner. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I, I guess uh, I'm a little surprised as the, uh, the owner had indicated that uh, we would be seeing some, uh, some plans to address uh, the wall that we've indicated is a concern uh, at this meeting. So I'm a little surprised that we didn't see that. Um, but maybe I'll just uh, launch into what I had intended. And I, I'm not sure. I, 
I may need to go a little deeper, uh, given that we didn't hear what we were expecting this evening. Um, but it, essentially, I think the committee's uh, being asked to adjust five bylaws. The bylaws, in my understanding, were written to reflect the long-term goals and livability of the town. Um, the purpose of the adjustments is to accommodate an expansion in square footage and the addition of a large garage to be added onto the front of the home. Um, primary concerns for existing residents in the neighborhood is preservation of the urban forest and canopy, preservation of the beautiful, unique character of our neighborhood, uh, which is a very special neighborhood, uh, preservation of our opportunity to enjoy our beautiful backyards. We take a lot of pride in our yards. We spend a lot of, we put a lot of effort into having our trees fertilized and trimmed and maintained. Um, uh, we've got beautiful views, natural serenity in the area. Uh, it really is a special area that needs to be preserved. Uh, and then preservation of a friendly and supportive environment and spirit. This is a neighborhood where people shovel each other's driveways and watch each, other, each other's pets and kids. And it's a very close, communicative neighborhood. Um, I, I'm a little surprised also to hear that the neighborhood was canvassed um, when we when I eventually had an opportunity to speak to the builder uh, and owner yesterday, uh, the owner indicated that he hadn't felt comfortable going door to door because of COVID with his mask. And I, and, you know, I appreciate that. The, uh, he looked to the builder and the builder said he'd spoken to three people, but uh, uh, Krista certainly wasn't uh, spoken to, no. we weren't spoken to. Um, so I guess maybe some, maybe some of the people that are moving out of the neighborhood because there is some turnover. I, I'm not sure who we spoke to, um, but certainly um, we weren't canvassed. Um, the um, uh, primary source of friction uh, and incompatibility with the town plan is a wall. Uh, the proposal would result in a massive 130 foot long wall ranging in height between 12 and 24 feet tall. It towers over the east side of the property and the impact of the wall is exacerbated because the elevation of the property is higher than the properties on the east side. So it literally will tower over the properties. They've already raised the height of the wall. Um, looks like two or three feet has been added so far uh, with another um, story to be added on top for a portion of the wall. Um, it really does change the view from, from our properties and the enjoyment of our properties. There's two potential solutions to this. One is you can create a battle with neighbors and I've spent days and hours trying to learn how the, the codes and, and the rules of the, of the community. Um, and I think we could actually block this thing, but nobody wins in that event because it just creates ill will and, and certainly somebody's gonna lose. Maybe it's us, maybe it's them. I don't wanna create that kind of an environment in our neighborhood. That's not what we're about. Um, ideally, we can come to a compromise that's acceptable to everyone. And, re and uh, the compromise, uh, as, as uh, Mr. Tanner indicated, uh, we did have opportunity to finally meet the owner uh, yesterday, and we had really constructive dialogue. I, I believe he's, you know, positive intent. I think he's sincere in his commitment to preserve the urban forest and canopy. I love that he wants to maintain the, uh, the uh, mid-century modern feel of the building. He's indicated that a portion of his expansion plan is to provide accommodations for a parent, which I, could, which I see as a real positive for our neighborhood. Uh, I assume if he was going to be you know, doing the expansion to build a basketball court or something like that, that would be viewed differently by the committee and, and would have been disclosed. Um, but to this end, if we could have a true and honest commitment from the owner that he would deliver on, on the proposals that he made to me yesterday, um, which are, uh, number one, a commitment to retain the mature trees on the property, except for the few that have been identified for removal under the plan, and number two, a commitment to create an, an attractive, subtle aesthetic on the wall through the use of various natural materials, colors, textures, possibly artificial windows. Uh, and I guess that's what I thought we were gonna hear a little bit more about this evening. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that, that we didn't. Um, and then a commitment to plant sometime in 2021, a staggered row or similar 
of relatively mature, tall trees along the length of at least two thirds of the wall at the highest part of the elevation that's practical. So the, uh, the purpose is to cause the wall to be filtered in its view uh, so it doesn't impact the existing neighbors so, so dramatically. Um, it, it, it really is, uh, it, it really is disappointing to spend all day looking out this window at a wall. Um, the, the fourth point uh, is one that was not proposed by the owner and I, I was hoping uh, Nabil would be here this evening. Uh, it's a commitment to work with the adjacent neighbor, that would be Krista, to mitigate the impact of a tall property towering over her deck, which will be right beside it. Um, and to be sensitive to the impact that a lot of outdoor lighting around that structure would have on her ability to uh, enjoy her property in the evenings. Um, so I was hoping that the owner would be here and be prepared to make a, a sincere, uh, give his word in honor uh, that he would fulfill those commitments, at which case uh, we would not have such an objection to looking at this 130 foot long, um, 12 to 20 foot high, 24 foot high wall. Um, so I, I don't know, Joel may be able to address that. We really do want to come to compromise. It, it's better for everyone. Okay, thank you, Ms. Pennington. You're at your five minute mark. I'd like the other uh, members of the, both the uh, neighbors to be able to speak as well. So I'm gonna let them um, have their chance. Um, I can do this uh, all at once or um, do it a little differently, Mr. Tanner, if you'd like to address each person's uh, comments or would you like to take That's them all at once? Reason we can, and we can do a bit more of a fluid response along the three. Okay, very well. So go ahead, Ms. Krista, you can address the committee at this time. I think you're frozen. Okay. Okay. While she um, takes... Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Okay, can now we can hear, hear you. Can you hear me at all? Yeah, we can hear you now. Go ahead. Yes? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much everything Suzanne said is, is where I'm at. I am the immediate neighbor to the east side of the property. We share a fence line. So I am the one that immediately will be part of viewing the big long wall and my one of my major concerns is grading and drainage as well if I'm hoping that will not be affected because part of all of our properties that um, run along Holyrood where Suzanne lives there's the natural runoff from Lakeshore Road because I'm lower I'm on a lower elevation from 306 we all have a natural runoff that comes from Lakeshore Road beginning at my property and goes all the way to the lake. So there's that concern as far as there's any major regrading or anything like that or tree removal, that might become an issue for, for me. And the other thing with the wall is like the aesthetic, obviously, but the also um, potential of exterior lighting at night, if it's lit up like an industrial unit at night, that's going to be like a mirror reflection into the whole side of my house, which incorporates my kitchen, my kids' bedrooms, the whole west end of our house, and my deck, which is used 20, 12 months out of the year. It's, it's not just a seasonal deck. So those are my concerns as far as that and I and I just want to note that no one no one has come and approached me and I'm immediately next door no one has ever come whether it's the owner or the builder or anyone has ever approached me at all so I just wanted to have that point I, I note all your comments and thank you for your submission um, we'll get answers as soon as Mr. Um, Van der Noort had the chance to uh, address the committee. Go ahead, sir. Hello, uh, Mark Van Noort. I'm uh, at 94 Holy Root. I, I live between Suzanne and uh, Krista. Um, I can't really see the property from my, because I, I see Krista's house from my, 
my vantage point of uh, my property. Um, but I do see the canopy of trees um, that is on that property. And I understand that they've uh, identified nine trees for removal. And I just wanted to ensure that there were permits for all those nine trees, because the trees that are permitted, uh, as indicated, dead on the on the green sign in front of the house, is uh, there's only three trees um, permitted for removal. So I just want to ensure that you're aware that that's happening. Thank you. Trees. Very well. So everyone's had a chance to address the committee. Go ahead, Mr. Um, before I do so, are there any questions of any of the members of the public, Ms. Pennington, Mr. Vanden Nortz, Ms. Lever, from the committee members before we turn it over to Mr. Tanner? I don't see everyone on the panel. Sorry, if, if, if I may, um, I, I guess I look at the staff comments and, and I heard some of the other um, commentary and it looks like staff comments uh, have quite heavy weighting and I, I did note some errors in the staff comments um, but I, I wasn't going to get into detail on that as long as we can come to a, a compromise but I did so this note is not a, a back and forth and like negotiation as you would sit with with the owner and have a free conversation with them but I will allow you to go ahead and state the points that you would like clarification on. We do have uh, our, our planner, Mr. Hassan, here who can address any of your concerns. Um, if you do want to mention the uh, points that you saw may have an error. Shall we wait to see whether there's a purpose in doing that so I don't waste the committee's time? No, once you, I've already allocated the time for each of the okay. um, members. So really the process is to take the matter into committee and allow us to have the discussion. So I'm actually taking this out of order right now for Sorry. your um, benefit. So if you'd like, please go ahead. But I, I, I would ask that you take no more than a minute or two. Sure, I apologize. Um, I, I did just want to highlight that um, in, in the uh, staff commentary, it talks about uh, um, the uh, the wall not having uh, a material impact over the neighborhood and uh, I, I guess I would have thought that someone from staff might have come into one of the yards or looked at it from one of the yards and I'm sure they couldn't possibly have said that uh, it, it didn't uh, that it didn't have material impact on on the neighbors uh, it, it absolutely changes the yards I, I, I'm it's, sorry no, that's fine, I, and I appreciate your comments. You're looking at it from an aesthetic point of view. We're looking at it from what is as of right to build on such a property, and I'll have Mr. Hassan Great. comment further on it. Go ahead, Mr. Hassan. Thank you, Madam Chair. So in terms of the easterly wall, um, staff noted in the comments that a majority of the wall, if not almost 75% of it, is being retained as existing, so nothing in terms of that is changing. In terms of its built form, the aesthetics, the colors, the materials, those aren't captured in the minor variants. Those are personal choices that the designer and homeowner have. In terms of the addition to the front of the home that adds to that dwelling depth, um, that's in the form of the uh, the garage. The staff had no concerns with that additional depth in relation to where that uh, addition was being added. For example, if the addition was being added in the rear, that would add more significant rear yard massing, which staff typically aren't in support of, but noting that it's in front of the house and connects with a circular driveway. There was no concerns about that additional area in which the building was being added onto. It's the height. Okay, um, Mr. Hassan, the height that we keep hearing about, uh, this neighbor, I mean, this applicant does have as of right to build two stories, correct? But he's choosing to build a bungalow, right? So what's the yes. differential from the height of this building to what he would be ha able to build as of right in terms of a two story? Yeah, through Madam Chair. So in the RL1 suffix zone, the maximum height permitted would be nine meters in relation to what is being added on to for the second floor addition. The total dwelling height would be, I believe it's 7.3 meters in height. And that's okay. measured that's measured from the front lot line uh, taken from grade for, to the established grade. Established great. Thank you very much, Mr. Hassan. Okay, we will now take the matter into 
um, forward to Mr. Tanner, who can address all of the concerns. I've noted them down, so if you miss anything, I'll remind you, but go ahead, Mr. Tanner. Thank you very much, committee. Um, so, yeah, I'll just start with the, in terms of trees, trees was the primary focus with the architectural intent. So we've had several separate site visits and reports done by our arborist. The permitted tree removals currently of the quantity of three are related to the existing permit that's in place for the renovation. We will be seeking a secondary permit for additional tree removals and in turn tree replanting strategies based on the total new removals. Um, in our general opinion, we pushed the client very, very, very hard to not um, to not increase or sorry decrease, I should say, the side yard setback and therefore in turn increase tree removals. We were very, very sensitive to all of the trees on the property. Um, so it, that's really the driving factor, not only with the architecture of the overall physical massing, also the rear structure. The client's investing a large, large sum of money to do a suspended foundation structure for the entire rear addition. So we're not excavating, we're not pouring concrete and backfilling. We are doing a suspended steel grid assembly. That is strictly driven A from architecture, B more importantly tree removal. So working with the arborist and having the arborist educate us on proximity to tree roots and, and that's the prime driver on why the client's investing additional funds in that foundation system to minimize the tree removals. So there will be a new tree removal permit grant, uh, you know, uh, applied for and hopefully granted according to the additional tree removals for the new proposed additions. Um, so there's close to 65 or 70 trees on the property with a total of, not, you know, the two permits combined, nine larger caliper tree removals, two smaller caliper, as well as a replanting strategy. Um, I just want to note, Christo, we absolutely appreciate the privacy concern on your end in terms of the deck, in terms of the home. There are zero plans of putting any night lighting on the east side wall of the entire building facade. We don't have any goals to light up that facade. Um, I do want to note too that we're not we're not decreasing that side yard. We're increasing the side yard just because of the way the property is angled. So we are sitting close to 9.5 meters back from that side yard. Um, the allowable regulation is 4.2. So as much as you don't want us to encroach on your privacy, we don't want to encroach on your privacy. Um, some of the additional building depth is coming from the architectural accent wall. So there's about a 12 foot architectural accent wall that's built into that elongated dwelling depth calculation. And again, that's, a, that's an architectural driven detail. It's also a privacy detail of you not staring out from the deck and just staring at somebody's essential driveway and you know parking vehicle. So um, there's some increased privacy with that wing wall. Um, we are we're happy to look, uh, Suzanne, at some additional plantings on that pool wall. Um, I think um, uh, Brandon had already noted that that pool wall is existing. It's going to be intact and undisturbed, quote unquote, in terms of the physical massing. So we're not changing the building height of the pool wing. Um, what we are doing is we're removing the rotting brick. We're removing the rotting wood. We're completely replacing all of the siding with a more aesthetically pleasing wall assembly. So what I can guarantee you, uh, Nabil is on standby he you know he's watching the meeting i told him you know no, it's not necessary to call in we typically represent all of our clients at our meetings nabil is an insanely passionate individual and i can promise you that um if he's told you that there are going to be plantings on that wall i can guarantee you there will be plantings on that wall um, I'm, I have a reputation to hold, as does my client in terms of general relationship, because they are going to be moving into this home. Um, so, so that I can tell you that that will be happening. Uh, Brandon already noted in terms of the max height, we're sitting at about 24 feet. We're allowed to go to 29. Again, that's the driver on really squatting the house. We don't want to dominate the streetscape. Um, the, um, uh, in terms of the grading comments, Krista, um, we, all, we always, always have uh, grading comments uh, and concerns that come up during the permitting process. That is going to be reviewed and approved by the Oakville Engineering Department. So that is a part of the permit approvals process in order for, uh, for us to not increase water flow onto your property. It's, it's, in our, it's our responsibility to feed water into the storm system and not onto neighboring properties. So that will be managed during the building permit site plan permit process. Um, I think I noted 
everything, I believe. Um, any further questions from the committee, um, I'm more than happy to answer. Yeah, uh, I think you've covered it mostly. Um, are there any questions or items of clarification of Mr. Tanner at this time? Okay, I see none. Mr. Vander Knut, uh, I just, uh, don't uh, usually go back and forth, but go ahead. Just Mr. Tanner has indicated that he's intending to seek additional permits for more trees. Uh, just uh, does he know how many trees he's in, intending to permit? Yeah, so we have a new arborist report, which is linked to the new building permit application. So total, total between the two permits, there's 11 tree removals. On the, east, on the east side wall, there's only uh, two trees coming down on the east side wall. Uh, the rest are, there's some dead species in the front we're dealing with. And then there's um, a core smaller cluster group of trees in the middle of the rear yard. So we're not touching any of the boundary trees. All of the boundary trees are staying. It's the internal trees that kind of form uh, the zone where the new addition is gonna be placed. So the large trees are intact. Intact, correct, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm looking at your um, your drawings. You you have them marked on your drawings. If um, town staff can, can put your drawings up in your presentation, I think that'll cover the last thing that people wanted to see your drawings. You can, you can direct staff which uh, page so this to. Is the, this is the survey plan. If we could go to the SP 1.01 site plan, zoning plan, there we go. Yeah, and then if we could just zoom in on this. So on the top right-hand corner of the garage, you're gonna see two tree removals right on that wall projection, uh, which are 9.4 meters in from the side yard setback. So those are, those are two smaller caliper tree removals. But again, you're seeing that the entire tree line along the side yard is remaining intact. And then on the rear addition, there's one tree to be removed in that center courtyard, and then there's that cluster grouping of, of trees where the addition is. But again, retaining, retaining the rear lot cluster of trees, because um, just as much as all the neighbors do, our, our owners obviously also want as much privacy as possible within the dwelling. Okay. Very well. I hope we've answered everyone's questions and um, thank you for all your submissions. Uh, members of the committee, do you have any items of clarification or questions at this time before we take the matter into committee? Okay, I see none. Um, who would like to start the ball rolling? Go ahead, Mr. Zalowski, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, what I believe I'm hearing here is uh, sincere efforts on the part of both the applicant and the residents to uh, come up with a solution that uh, works for everybody and that uh, it sounds like the owner has made some commitments. Um, it seems like they're on the right track, but they're not quite there yet. So, Madam Chair, I'm going to move that the application be approved, meet, finding that it meets the four tests of the Planning Act, but I would uh, alter the proposed condition that the uh, construction proceed in general accordance with site plan and elevations to the satisfaction of the Director of Planning and that a building permit issue within two years. Um, Madam Chair, I'm suggesting this again because what i've heard tonight is an honest effort to not have the neighbors object and the owner to uh, tweak some features i wouldn't want to approve the application um, with the drawings that are in front of us tonight have them make some changes and then be told that you're no longer in general accordance um, 
and I think it's also uh, to the benefit of everybody if the uh, applicant, the residents have a chance to talk, the applicant has a chance to amend its drawings, the uh, discussion of this meeting be forwarded to the director of planning and he have the ability to um, make the final decision on any amended drawings that might come out of that discussion between the applicant and the residents. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Hilovsky. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I, I don't see Mr. Hardcastle because things have shifted on my panel, but I, anyone want to say anything before we move the motion? Okay. Very well. All those in support? Hold on, I need to go through my panel again. I see you, Mr. Hardcastle. So your application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you everyone for your submission. We appreciate it. Thanks so much, committee. Have a great day. Thank you very much. We appreciate your leniency in our in our submissions. Thank very you. Very well. Have a good night, everyone. You too. Um, I think, yes, last matter is a confirmation of the minutes for March 9th. Who would like to, now I've lost Miss Murray. Maybe she'll come back when some of the other people have been, have left. Did we lose Judy? I think we lost Judy. Yeah. Was she there for the vote? I thought I saw her, or did I not see her? Someone needs to run through the tape because now I'm seeing double. <laughs> Heather? Uh, yes. Can you just double check that the last vote Judy I, I was don't there have, for so, it? Sorry. I, I, I don't know when we lost her. Yeah, I don't I have any way of replaying her. the tape at this point. Just a second, if you hold on, I, I, a faraway voice is yeah, saying yeah. in the IT, no, it's okay. they're, we'll hold they're on. going to help. Thank you very much. Sorry, yes, apparently Judy said yes. Okay, so we did lose her after the vote. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, so you saw uh, Ms. Murray put her hand up in support of the application. Correct. Correct. Okay. All right. Should we wait to see if she logs back in for the uh, confirmation of the minutes? Um, that would be up to you. We still have a quorum with the four um, available. Okay. Okay. Very well. Who would like to move the uh, minutes of March 9th? Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Flemington. And then... Um, motion for adjournment. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle.